Okay, welcome to Three Men in a Blog, a special short show which will discuss the Constitution, crowdsourcing a Constitution and the effect on localism, community councils. Today I'm joined by Nori Stewart, political cartoonist, Phil Attridge, former councillor of the Labour Party here in the city, Donica, Donica, Donica McLowan, McLowan. Uh -huh. a, a writer, and myself, Stuart Lockhead. So, um, Phil, um, last year we saw the demise of a national organisation representing community councils in Scotland. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, look, I can just tell you a little bit. Bas basically, the, um, the National Association had put in for a grant of over £80,000 from that. Scottish Parliament, and they were told that they could have 44, and in a fit of pique, because it's the only way I can describe it, um, was that the chair decided to pull the plug on the association. The association had been riven for quite a while with suspending this one, suspending that one, a bit of internecine warfare. Um, personally, I think it's actually the best thing that could have happened. Um, now community councils will have to work together, they'll have to get it to, together and there won't be any top-down organisation. Um, I think it's a... Uh, so you think it's actually stronger? I think it will be stronger, but it's up to community councils if they want to survive. Because £80,000 on the scale of things in well, Scotland is, 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 is neither here nor there. If they want to do it, they will do it. Well, I've, I've got the impression, the opposite impression of course, um, that uh, the, you know, the collapse of a national organisation for community councils, just to me, just emphasised the weakness of community councils. I mean, my experience of spending time in England and local councils and parish councils, and then coming here to Scotland and getting to know community councils a little, was that they're completely toothless yeah. affairs here in Scotland. A lot of no powers, no no authority to own assets, and as a result, community enterprise trusts have to be formed. They, they, they become, there becomes a need all over the place when you've got local communities want to actually own anything, whether a wind farm or a, or a pond or a, a fishing loch or a village hall come to that. Yeah, I, I, I can see where you're coming from, but they really are an advisory body. They're there to represent the views of uh, the, the community at large. But that, I mean, maybe that's their weakness. I mean, maybe just simply being a talking shop doesn't cut. Well, that's what I, what I no, see. It doesn't, but then if you go <laughs> locally here, Leaflings Residence Association, it doesn't have any legal powers to own anything or anything else, but, but it's, it's an act, an act of water think, bill, but is that um, a prostitution but bill. It's scary. Yeah, it, 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 it basically works. exists to, to harass fuckers. But is that... Uh, mm, no. Wait a minute, is that, not, oh, that, is that not evidence of the weakness of community against them? The very fact that the Leaflings Residence Association had to get together to sort out a local problem because the community council was toothless. And they're more effective because an awful lot of people join community councils just so they can wander about going on the community councils. They have to make themselves relevant to local people. Residence okay. associations so have make and themselves leaflet, relevant and to local The Leaflings Housing Association was there before the community council. I mean, they were organised. No, no, not the Leaflings. He thinks residence association. Been there since the early 70s. Okay, well, the, the, the reason of introducing this, works as this well. part was so that we could look at um, the issue of constitution right. and local democracy. I mean, I went to a meeting last week at the Parliament, chaired by uh, Leslie Riddick, which was about Nordic, it was under the banner of Nordic Horizons. And one of the presentations there was about how. In Iceland, they've recently crowdsourced a new constitution. A thousand people got together on Facebook, I believe, and then they elected 25 of them, their members to write a new constitution. And this new constitution has now been written, and um, there's, there's still to be a vote. I think they still got to have a referendum on it. <coughs> that was one of the presentations. And the, the other crucial presentation, I think, was the, about localism ac across Europe and how. The turnout to a, an election in Scotland, local election in Scotland, is about 30% outside when it's on its own and not at the same time as a national election. Whereas across Europe, it can be double that or close to 90% in cantons in Switzerland and uh, in communes in, in Germany, in France. That's because they teach the kids at school they have civics 
you know, they also, but they also teach kids in school civics. They teach, they teach them about democracy. They teach them about engaging with it. They teach them what local councils are. Here, uh, a dog dies in the streets. The council's fault. Anything else? The council's fault. What's the council mm -hmm. got to do? Okay. But also um, these, these, these. We're lazy. Elsewhere, almost universally across Europe, the average size of a, of a council area, the population, is somewhere about twenty thousand people. The average size of a Scottish council area is 160,000 people. And there's a, a disconnect between the, the electorate and the politicians and the council officials. Plus, uh, local councils have very little powers, whereas you, you know, you've got a small council even of 3,000 people in the north of Norway, and they were running the local hospital, the local well, school. I mean, that basically flies in the face of every political party's agenda for Cutting out layers of well, that's that's a, know, not every political party. That's a right wing agenda. Well, yeah, well I, I would argue the Labour Party. Yeah, I would argue the Labour Party. Would argue. Uh, yeah. Well, when you said right wing Labour, I mean a bit of Labour Party. Yeah, okay, Thirty years, it just uh -huh. you know, yeah. I mean now to it, it did drag them almost kicking and screaming, but not quite. Some of them quite happily way into the right wing territory. So okay, okay, well, well, if, 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 is one person at a time. If you downsize it if you like, the decision-making, the democratic decision-making, to that kind of level, you're then automatically doing what everybody pays lip service to. You know, localization, power they're, people. They're, they're raising their own taxes, mostly. Which is diametrically opposed to what actually happens. Not in the rest of Europe. No, but here. Okay. They're continually dragging power well, is there any into the centre. Hmm. Let's come back to the, the, the title of this of, of, of the topic. I was trying to get it back around to is a constitution and crowdsourcing a constitution. Now we're looking at a referendum on the independence of Scotland in two and a half years. And at the moment, what in, what is independence? You know, the, the definition of what would be what would how would a, an independent Scotland be governed? And we haven't got a decision on that yet. In fact, we seem to be a long way. Is there any potential? for crowdsourcing a constitution or f between now and a referendum? Any the, the SNP referendum? have written a paper, Scottish Constitution. Very much, I'm talking very much but outside the SNP. Very there's general. A, there's an awful lot of other Lots people of who are not SNP members who are keen on independence. And can we, is there any potential for a movement outside the SNP to try and wrest control of the future of Scotland away from the elites? by crowdsourcing a constitution. Would that motivate people? By crowdsourcing, I take it you mean by getting Facebook a lot of people page. together to demand it, to get a sufficient number of people together to demand it, that it has to be done. And to function okay. as a civic organisation beyond just demanding well, it. Well, on an Icelandic basis. Because if you're yeah. demanding it, yes. Because if you're just demanding it, then you're asking, again, if you just stop at that, you're asking an, an elite or po politicians to do it for you. Mm -hmm. But do you, not, do you not then fall into the problem that the Cameron Commission had where the SNP weren't playing their game? If we start looking for a constitution crowdsourced or otherwise, uh, they're not going to be a huge section that aren't going to vote yes for independence, going to ask why we need it when we've got Westminster. You know, you've, you're liable to, to end up with quite a one-sided right. debate. Although I think it's, it has attractions for both sides of the argument, because at least it would clarify what, what is meant by independence. If you had a constitution... It has a huge attraction for those of us that are looking at, at independence as a stepping stone to a more democratic, more... A beacon of light, as, social as Alex Salmon said, to the English society. But hang on, uh, those two things are, are actually mutually exclusive. What you're saying yes, is, you're yes. saying you want to, to democratic, but you're also mandating that it must be socially fair, which obviously is a very specific political agenda. Yeah, but I mean, that, that's what I'm looking for, because I don't think we'll ever get it out of Westminster. No, but yes, that's what you're looking for, but, but why use the word democratic? Because I expect to lose a few votes. I, I expect and I have to make my argument. But you expect to be the, the, the socially fair thing, which basically uh, the left thing is going to be dominant in Scotland. Well, no, no, it has I, been dominant no, in the past. I, but I'm you're talking about society, not socially in the sense of socialist. No, you said socially fair. Well, I'm, I'm talking about that society spreads 
the wealth a bit more evenly. Well, that's a I mean, very we, specific political agenda. It's a very specific. I don't think it is. I, I think no, that, absolutely it is. No, of I, course I, it is. I think that's an agenda that you'll find in some very strange places. I think you'll find it in the churches. I think you'll find it in the Tory party in Scotland. Well, why so, not think socially that, fair in Germany, in Sweden, in France? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're socially fair when you're looking at on the right spectrum. But they're um, not necessarily democratic. I mean, you, you, you were talking about starting from zero with the Constitution. And you're saying that what we want is a democratic, socially fair. Now, you're saying the word socially fair. Maybe it just slipped in there because it plays well to the gallery. But, I mean, you realise that... To say that it must be, to mandate that it must be socially fair, is actually undemocratic. What happens if people ten years from now want to have a, a, a commercially competitive that, Scotland, but that, which is exactly my, the opposite? That's my opinion, and I don't believe that. Well, it's that not democratic. Exactly say opposite. socially fair. No, I mean that's. I'm stating what I'm looking for. Okay, but no, but you, what you're looking for is is, is 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 can't exist. It can't be both democratic. And mandated okay, to be socially fair. Okay, well, I think we've spent enough time on socially fair and. Uh, well, well, the best example, well, the best example of that a country that's democratic and completely and utterly socially unfair is the United States of America. Basically, if you haven't got the money, no, the but, but year and year again, or or every four years, people vote for it to be mm. that way, and that is democracy. Now, I'm not saying that American democracy... That's, that, is a, that is a kind of democracy. Right. Well, it's a kind of democracy. A variety. And you could argue that, that it, is, it is corporately uh, distorted by, by, by the way that it's set up and lobbyists and everything else. But what I'm saying to you, yeah, this is actually important. It's not a small issue, right? We're all fighting for independence, supposedly, right? Or well, are we? I don't know. I, 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 but, but, but certainly... There's all four of us around the table are pro-independence, but of course we, we probably would disagree on the definition of what... No, no, but clearly we would. And, and that, that's what I'm saying. All I'm saying to you is... In our own heads, right? Quite different. You got, it's really important to decide before you start using words like democracy. It's a bit like people giving democracy to Iraq, right? Before you give people democracy, you've got to realise that the for, what the what is democratically chosen may not be your preferred okay, well, form of government. But, but that's my point. I think that that's why by having a, 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 a constitution, writing a constitution, a process, engaging the people, using crowdsourcing in particular would engage people, would define what we really mean by dem our a democracy for this country. I think that's something that would come after the debate, after the independence after. The referendum. Yeah. I mean, you would well, set up the fact... I, I, no, I think you would probably set up the fact that after, and if we did vote for independence, then it would be um, looking at the constitution. You, you, you're kind of falling into the, the trap from the English, that you've got to get everything sorted out, signed, underlined, mm -hmm before you actually get, and the more you do of all these, well, how many boats are you going to have? How much army are you going to have? What, what are you going to have? Then they'll pull you up every time and you'll pull you end up, up with no I'll, independence. So I'll have to pull you up on that. It's not about the English. It's about the British. It's about the Whitehall, Westminster elite. Who are very good, good at this stuff. They've yeah, been doing this stuff in India, they've been doing this stuff everywhere they pulled out of the world. They've been quite good, they've been quite good. And listen to your accent, but do you not, 800 years. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Do you not think that Phil's got a point? That to make it part of the debate before any referendum, I think there's a chunk that you're almost denying immediately, a chunk of the population. Because if you're for the union, you're not going to be able to see the reason for a constitution. Well, that's true. And that's a problem. So it's not, so that, I mean, on the one hand, you've got the pro-unionists, a section of pro-unionists that don't want to discuss the need for a constitution. On the other hand, what Phil just said, a lot of pro-unionists want to, to go into all the detail about what an independent Scotland would be like, which, the to separate that from a constitution, to me, is... But the problem isn't a debate about the constitution, the problem is a decision about the constitution. And that decision can't be made until after uh, a vote. It will be, I believe, uh -huh, mm -hmm. that it will be a shot across Westminster bows anyway, because I actually believe you'll have a majority in Scotland that are looking for a much more bottom-up situation than Westminster will feel comfortable with, which means we lose a vote on independence. How happy are they going to be for, to go for Devo Max? Well, that's another issue. If we can come to that. But I'm saying the, cons the Constitution will be, if it's discussed and signed and sealed before an indie vote, it will become part of that. 
Okay, well, Can I, I just say, by the way, that I actually agree with you, Nari. I think that the majority of people will go for a, a socially fair, which is mm. high tax and high benefit uh, society. Um, no, I'm I, all I'm saying is that that is not democratic. I'm just saying it's very important to right. be clear about what we've got. 